staring at the bloody TV, hearing the same depressing news over and over again. Everybody's doing everything wrong. Everybody has blood on their hands. Looking on Facebook, seeing conspiracy videos suggesting the medical establishment is out for world domination. The world seems like it's coming to an end, and that matches the mood you're in. Maybe you've been in a state of sadness, confusion, or depression for weeks. Maybe last night you found yourself on the phone for an hour complaining to your friend about how awful everything was and things would never be the same again. You just know everything you had will be gone and we can never go back. You stare at the stack of work that you could do. Maybe it's from your office or perhaps you have a business online or maybe you have no work at all and there's nothing you can do. Time is just wasting. And so you're staring at the wall, digging yourself in deeper and deeper into a hole of depression and frustration from which it seems there's no escape. Everything you think of to do comes with a screaming thought, ah, I can't do that now. Maybe later when I have some time to get my head back on straight. The good news is that this doesn't have to be your permanent state. The better news is that you and you alone control the condition of your mind and your heart every day. I struggled with depression for decades. If you're anything like I was, every day presented an endless list of things I had to do and had no energy or interest in getting done. Thinking about each thing, I would say, I gotta do that today. The tonality and feeling was just another lead weight around my neck. At the same time, you see people around you that are moving through the day and their work and their assignments without a problem. Sometimes it's even people that have struggles and problems and burdens, and you wonder how in the world they can do this. Maybe you've even asked, given everything you've got going on in your life, how do you cope with it all? And you always seem so up. You both laugh a little and they say some encouraging words, and then you're back in the black hole. The truth? It's not all doom and gloom. The best part of this whole situation is that the way to get from where you are to where you want to be, to a place of productivity and out of the funk is as simple as five steps you can start right now. The first thing to know is that this feeling of overwhelm and powerlessness when a big event happens is both normal and not shameful. COVID-19 has attacked all of us unexpectedly and caught us unprepared. There's no shortage of people pointing fingers and assessing blame and screaming about whose fault it is. But the truth is, it doesn't really matter. What matters is just that it happened. The effect on our heart and our productivity is profound and real. Don't feel bad if you're scared or numb. Don't hide. Simply understanding that it is real and normal is the perfect first step. Just choosing to stand up and act is the first move. The second step to combat this is to understand that there are some concrete things you can do right now about how you feel. In fact, you are the only one that can do anything about how you feel and about how you live your life each day. Nothing on 
TV or social media or anything else, we'll do anything except maybe temporarily. That is so important, it's worth repeating. You control your mood, your actions, and how your day goes. Accepting that you can change your feelings and take responsibility for how your life goes is already a liberating thought by itself. The great out there is not in control. You are. Choose to grab control and make a different story today. There are some things you can do right now that can be really simple. So what are some simple pleasures that lift your mood? Maybe sending a gentle note of kindness or reading something that lifts your spirits, turning off all the noise and settling into something positive, listening to the birds celebrate the coming spring. Spend 15 minutes on a craft project that's been on the shelf for years. The third simple step to combat madness is to start now. Just like staring at the pile of work and saying, I can do that later, it's easy to put off doing anything when you're in a state of frustration, sadness, or depression. But you can change that right now with small things. Not later, right now. One reason we put off starting now is because we're afraid we're going to fail, that we'll do something and it just won't work. So part of starting now is to agree with yourself that no matter what happens, it's the action that matters, not the outcome. No one is keeping score. You can choose to do small things that can lift you out of the funk right now. If you fall off the wagon and spiral down again, so what? Get up and try again. Recommit, start over as many times as you need to. Starting now is always easy and always possible. No matter what has come before this moment, starting now is just that. Starting now. Now the fourth simple step is to do something to serve someone else. If you sit down right now and took a pencil and paper, you could think of five people that you could serve little ways, little things. I know that we're locked up and we can't go places, but a lot of those can be digital, maybe through text or phone or some other means. You can choose to share a bright message or a joyful thought to lift their day. I get messages all day like I'm sure you do, but they're usually downers and conspiracy noise. That's not helpful, it just stirs the pot. Remember, if you feel crazy and sad because of what's going on, then millions of other people do also. So you are not alone. But if you choose to act in love and light, you will be among the minority that is making a difference. The greatest blessing we can be to the world right now is to live in service of someone else. And since we're confined to quarters, virtual service will be most of what we can do. Now, if you wanna do something more than notes and calls, I know some people who have ordered groceries or take out food or flowers and had them delivered. Anything that moves your thoughts away from your own misery and sadness is a candidate. Anything that quickens your pulse, livens your heart, it has the potential to put a smile on someone's face. Now, the fifth way to combat this madness is to love yourself. So what does it mean to love yourself? Now, I'm not talking about self-indulgence or self-pity. 
If you think about a dear friend who is suffering, your mind is filled with possibilities of actions you could take to lift or bless their life. What if you treat yourself as a best friend? Loving yourself is caring for your body. What if you took a shower, got dressed, made yourself look really good? What if you admire yourself in the mirror, whatever your shape? Remember and take joy in a good thing that you have achieved. There are an infinite number of ways to love yourself. The problem is we just don't do them. This is your chance. If someone came for you for advice about how to love and care for themselves, you could give them that advice. You could tell them. You could give them a whole swack of ideas. So do it for you. Now, here is a simple exercise to get you started. Go to the mirror, look deeply in your own eyes, and without flinching or looking away, say, I love you. And say it again, and say it again. Do it 10 times. Do it every day for a week, and see what happens. Now, even if you do these five things regularly, you will find yourself succeeding sometimes, and failing sometimes. So what? Thinking, I can't keep it up. That's just a convenient excuse for not starting. So here are some tools I use every single day to keep myself focused and out of depression and sadness. I know they work because I've had decades of practice. One, I take a walk and I talk to myself out loud. I say kind and positive things about myself, remembering that I'm divine. A second thing I do is learn something new. I read a new book, I learn a new skill. You could look up how to make masks or some other activity that would be of service and useful in this particular situation. And then choose to devote a few minutes every day to that situation. Number three, you could find a way to donate a little time to a crisis center. Number four, you could get involved with a local church or charity. Number five, you can find a way to give love. The truth of all this is that you are divine. So spend 10 minutes right now. Picture yourself serving. Explore the feeling of gratitude that comes. Now, if you do these things, you will find yourself getting out of the madness. Do that 10 minute exercise five times a day and then serve just like you pictured. It's important that you speak the feelings you have out loud so you can hear them and enjoy them more fully. Now, one more time. Depression and sadness is real. Everyone feels it, more or less, and it is not shameful. Number two, you can do something about it. Start now and start simple. Number three, do not procrastinate. Do it now and recommit as needed. Number four, serve others. Get out of yourself and figure out something you can do that's valuable and helpful. Number five, love yourself. Treat yourself like you would your best friend. After all, you're divine. And above all, have some fun. This will pass and will not define our existence forever. Get help if you need it. Be a real person and get involved. Give service, help, and be real. Claim your place as a rightful and powerful contributor to the solution. Super grateful that you took some time to watch the video. Remember, the ultimate life is yours for the having, yours for the creating, and just like this beautiful, peaceful stream here, life can be like that every day, no matter what the turmoil on the outside, and these five steps are just one set of things that you can do starting now. I want to encourage you now to move on to the next video in the playlist and get even more tips on how to overcome obstacles. You are the key. You are the master. You are the creator. We'll see you in the next video.